Hello, everyone on Facebook and on YouTube. Nice to see you. Today's topic is going to be fascinating. It's actually a very interesting topic. You want to know what it is? It's if a jury determines that your doctor was careless and that his carelessness was a cause of your injury, are they required? Are they required? to give you money to compensate you for all of the harms and losses and damages that you incurred. You want to know the answer? Come join me for a moment as I share with you some great information. Hi, everybody. I'm Jerry Oginski. I'm a New York medical malpractice and personal injury attorney. So now while I change my glasses here and you can actually see me and I can see you, um, the answer is yes, they are. And the operative word here is required. So here's the scenario. You've decided to bring a lawsuit against your doctor. Why? because you claim that he was careless and you claim that his carelessness was a cause of your injury. And now you're out of work for months and months. You've been getting constant medical care and attention to try and fix the problem. You've been going to many different doctors and nobody can really fix the problem. Now you are disabled. You are significantly disabled. And what are you doing? You're out of work. You can't do the daily activities that you used to do. So what do you do? Now you're struggling to find out how you're going to pay your rent. How are you going to pay your mortgage? How are you going to pay your expenses? How are you going to put your kids through school? And now you have no choice but to consider whether or not you may actually have a valid malpractice case. So what do you do? You wind up finding an attorney. You go to an attorney who then goes ahead and gets all of your medical records, who then evaluates it and says, you know what? I have to send out your records to a medical expert to confirm that, in fact, there was wrongdoing, that the wrongdoing was, uh, the wrongdoing was a cause of your injury and that the injury is significant or permanent. Okay, now the medical expert comes back and says, yes, you have a valid basis for a case. Terrific. Now your attorney says you're going to go forward and start the lawsuit. Okay, so what happens then? What happens then is that the doctor and his attorneys turn around and answer the allegations to your lawsuit. And typically, here's what they do. They turn around and say, hey, why are you suing me? We did nothing wrong. I did nothing wrong. And guess what? If I did something wrong, then so did you, Mr. Patient. You're responsible for your own injuries. Those are typical defenses that we see. And then the doctor and his attorney turn around and say, you know what? If I did something wrong, whatever I did didn't cause or contribute to your injuries. That's another common defense we see. And then if it, to, to make it even worse, they turn around and say, hey, you know what? If I did something wrong and whatever I did caused you harm and injury, your injuries really are not as bad as you claim them to be. So that's like sticking the knife in a little bit more just to say, ha ha, I'm right, you're wrong. So they say, we're never going to negotiate. We're never going to settle. We'll see you at trial. All right. So what does that mean? It means that now your case will ultimately go to trial. That means two or three years down the road, after you've gone through the entire litigation process, now you're going to get to trial. Okay, so that brings us to the topic of today's video. If a jury after a trial has come to the conclusion that, yes, your doctor was in fact negligent, he was careless, and they find that, yes, by the way, before I get to those questions, I have to tell you that when a jury reaches a verdict, it's not a simple yes or no verdict. Was the doctor responsible? Yes or no. And that's it. You win. No, that's not how it works. That's not how any of it works. So how does it work? Well, at the end of the case, after the attorneys have made their closing arguments, the judge gives the jury instructions on the law. And as part of their ability to reach a verdict, the judge tells them, listen, you are going to have to answer a series of questions in order, in order to reach your verdict. The answers to those questions represent your actual verdict. Okay, so now you've been on trial for two entire weeks. Everything is hard fought. The defense is refusing to acknowledge and take responsibility for anything. All right, now it goes the distance. The judge now gives the jury legal instructions. And now what happens then? Now the jury goes back to deliberate. And now they are tasked with answering those questions, the jury questions. And the first question they're typically going to be asked is, was the doctor negligent? Which means, was he careless? Yes or no? So if they determine that the answer is no, guess what? You lose nothing. You get absolutely nothing. Your case is over. They never even get to answer the second question. If, however... On the other hand, the jury comes back and says, you know what? Yes, the doctor was negligent. Okay, now they go down to question number two, which typically is, was the doctor's negligence a proximate cause of your injuries? Now, what does that mean? 
Well, proximate cause is that link between the wrongdoing and your injury. There has to be a bridge, a connection, a link connecting the two. If the jury determines that, yes, something was done wrong, but that wrongdoing was not a cause of your injury, guess what? You get nothing. Your case is over. And again, the jury is told, stop if you reach that conclusion. Don't go any further. Don't answer any other questions. And you go home without a dime. Excuse me. So now what happens then? So let's say for a moment that the jury has now answered two questions in your favor. Yes, the doctor was careless. And yes, his carelessness was a cause of your injury. What happens next? So that brings me to the title of today's video. Is the jury required? Here's the operative word required to give you money to compensate you for all of the harms and losses and damages that you incurred because of his carelessness? And the absolute answer is, here in New York, yes, they are. Now, the jury is required to go to the next series of questions which focuses on damages. Now, there can be many different types of damages, such as lost medical, exp no, such as lost earnings, right? It's easy enough to calculate. Let's say you were earning $100,000 a year, and now you've been out of work for six months. Okay, we can get your pay stubs, we can get your W-2 forms, we can get your tax returns, and we can actually calculate how much income you lost for the time that you were out of work. And then we can project into the future how much money you are likely going to lose because of your ongoing injuries and disabilities. That's what we call a pecuniary loss, a financial loss, all right? Or, or another way to say it is that that's, that's an economic loss. But there are other types of damages, such as non-economic loss, which cannot be calculated as easily. Like, for example, um, pain and suffering. What is the suffering and the pain that you've had to endure during the entire duration, from the time this incident first occurred, throughout the entire years you're waiting to get to trial? That's known as past pain and suffering, as well as into the future. I have to tell you, there have been instances where, for whatever reason, a jury reached the question about damages. They the jury determined that, yes, there was carelessness by the doctor, and his carelessness was a cause of the patient's injuries. And then, for some inexplicable reason, they gave the patient nothing in terms of, mon in terms of monetary compensation. Nothing. How is that possible? If they've already determined that, yes, this patient suffered significant harm and injury because of the doctor's carelessness, how could they conceivably, conceivably, given the patient nothing? Well, that type of case typically will get reversed on appeal because once the jury has determined that, yes, your doctor was careless and that his carelessness was a cause of your injury, now they are required to evaluate the amount of each element of damages that you're claiming. Now, the amount is subject to interpretation by the jury. And the jury is the one to come to the ultimate conclusion about how much each element of your damages are worth. How much is the pain and suffering worth in the time of the incident up until now? How much is it going to be worth into the future for the next 20, 30, 40 years? The jury will be able to make that assessment. And if the jury comes back with an assessment that is wildly abnormal and says, you know what? We think that you are only entitled to receive $10,000. And meanwhile, all your injuries are so horrible and so significant and you need multiple surgeries to correct, that would be inconsistent with the real value of your injuries. Now, if on the other hand, they come back with a $50 million verdict for something that's healed up and leaves you with no permanent problem, no permanent injury, guess what? You've now just bought yourself an appeal because the defense is pretty much guaranteed to appeal that type of verdict. Okay, because again, that may be inconsistent with the testimony and with the evidence in your particular case. So, getting back to the title of this video, this morning's video, is the jury required to give you money as compensation if they find that yes, your doctor was careless and yes, his carelessness was a cause of your injury? The answer is yes, they will be required to give you money. The question then becomes, how much? And that is a function for the jury to evaluate to determine how much money you are to receive. Now, some people say, hey, wait a second. Does the judge give the jury a guideline about how much money he thinks you're entitled to? And the answer is no, he doesn't. The function of the judge is to control what goes on in the courtroom. The judge is in charge of giving the jury the law as it applies in your case. The judge really, his function is uh, includes 
making sure everything is done properly during trial, such as an attorney asking questions properly, such as trying to admit a certain piece of evidence. It is the judge's function to make sure those things that are supposed to get in, get in. Those things that are kept out, have, you know, that are inappropriate are kept out. So the judge does not tell the jury what he thinks about the case. The judge does not tell the jury what he thinks they should give as a form of compensation or how much. So why do I share this morning's great video with you? I share it with you just to give you an insight and an understanding into what goes on in these medical malpractice cases here in New York. You know, I do understand that you're watching this video because you likely have questions or concerns about your own matter. Well, if your matter did happen here in New York and you're thinking about bringing a lawsuit but have not yet done so, but because you still have questions that need answers, what I invite you to do is, you know what I'm going to say, right? Pick up the phone and call me. You know I answer questions just like yours every single day, and I'd love to chat with you. You can reach me at 516-487-8207 or by email at jerry, G-E-R-R-Y, at oginski-law.com. Well, that's it for today's video. I'm Jerry Oginski. Have a fantastic day. Bye-bye, everybody.